Okay, welcome everybody to this week's uh, Sixto community meeting in a world where Sixto is now in GA. So, and uh, yeah, had a great week last week for those who made it to SixtoCon. So we'll be covering uh, all of that um, in the course of the meeting. But as per normal, we'll start off with the project round robin. So anyone here, any updates on the Rico side? Um, Bob, did you want to comment on rolling back uh, the zero, zero 002 change? Uh, I can. Um, so I think, uh, I forget, I think it was Frederick and um, another GitHub noted that uh, we were double base 64 encoding uh, a couple fields on upload. And uh, in looking at it, um, that's it's more of a factor of cogeneration uh, that we're using in Recore rather than a deliberate design decision. Um, unfortunately, the, the way that the current type is written, uh, we copy the double encoded version over uh, for the signature value. So that essentially means in order to have backward compatibility, we need to yet again rev the Intoto type. Uh, so it's a, a trivial change, but unfortunately, we've got to do that to get backward compatibility. So. Uh, that change was committed and rolled back. Uh, that never actually pushed into production, so we don't have any entries in the log that we need to worry about a backwards compat issue with. It's just a matter of uh, rolling that out um, as a new type. Um, so the change is uh, a little bit more complicated just because there's a little more plumbing that has to get done, but uh, I've got the PR mostly done. And as soon as I can get out of meetings, I will hopefully push that up either today or tomorrow. Great, thank you. If there's any more details, folks can add that into the minutes. And Fulcio, Hayden. Um, yesterday, uh, myself, uh, Lila and Kenny completed the CT log sharding. So um, this is the certificate transparency log uh, that records all issued Fulcio certificates. Um, it, uh, for best practices, it's best to um, shard the log to keep it smaller yearly. Um, and so we sharded from the previous log called test to a new log called 2022. We'll do the same in 2023. Uh, went very well. It's all done. Um, hopefully you didn't notice. Uh, if you use any client that uses tough, the new uh, verification key was pulled in automatically. If you are um, verifying not using tough for certain clients, you may have had to update it. Great. Any questions? Anyone seen anything? Seems seamless to me. Uh, yeah, thanks, Hayden. All right, on to cosign and Zach. Do you want to cover this? What are our versioning guarantees? Yeah, so in linked in the doc is a uh, GitHub discussion, basically, with a bunch of different questions around, like, what are our versioning guarantees? Uh, there's some documentation on the Sigsor docs about this, uh, and it is not nearly as detailed as I would like, uh, especially now that we're GA. Uh, so questions in here include like, are we versioning the API and the CLI in Cosign the exact same way? Implicitly, it seems like we're doing that. Should we be? Um, what are the guarantees on backwards compatibility in the CLI? Uh, I am of the opinion through hard won experience that like strict semantic versioning isn't a realistic goal for CLIs. Um, just because what's a breaking change? If I change like some output to st standard error, is that a breaking change? Uh, people will complain at you about that. I have learned from experience. Um, so I don't think we can cover nearly all of these in a meeting like this, but I would strongly, strongly encourage people to raise versioning issues of their own uh, and discuss with me. Uh, and then here's my proposal on versioning stuff is I'll let this sit for uh, the rest of the week. Uh, would love as much feedback as and arguing and whatever as anyone wants to do during that time period. Uh, at that point, I'm going to try to make a proposal about a versioning policy, uh, including resolutions to most of these questions based on kind of uh, hopefully a consensus opinion, uh, but I'll tie break consensus uh, in, in my favor. Uh, and, then, and then I'll um, circulate uh, 
ahead of the next community meeting, basically a rough proposal, try to solicit a bunch of feedback. If that starts sounding good to most people, we can um, maybe push that up to the to the TSC to, to ratify it and start sticking it in docs, but open to feedback. Uh, hopefully at this point on in the meeting on sort of that proposed process and not any of the technical details. And I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on the technical details in the discussion. Any questions or comments for Zach? Zach, do you think you're gonna tackle like all the questions as a whole or? Uh, I, yeah, it's, I, I, my hope is to articulate a coherent strategy that covers most of the questions. Uh, so that might mean that the propo versioning proposal, like the thing that the text that we would ultimately publish uh, isn't necessarily structured like this discussion but hopefully it will give you answers to most of the issues raised in this discussion. Or I'll punt on things that are particularly controversial um, in, in the hope of getting you know, an easy win and then we can resolve those, those things later. Um, cool, all right, well, there's some, some spicy stuff in there, so it, it's a lot of fun. I encourage you to all uh, chime in. Yep, please take a look everybody. And I might think about how we can explicitly get some of this out to end users, um, just to make sure we've we've got sort of users weighing in on what, what their expectations are in this space. All right, Cosine 2.0, Hayden. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention that this uh, tracking issue is here. Um, we're starting to think through what's going to be a part of the next major release of Cosine. Uh, the primary motivation for this is we need to drop the Cosine experimental flag. It's going to require a whole bunch of changes in a whole bunch of places. Um, so we should take advantage of this and um, get in any other changes that we want. Um, there's some discussion in here about you know not making the scope uh, massive for this. But if there's um, something that is a breaking change uh, that you'd like included, please comment it here um, so we can discuss more. Uh, if there's a non-breaking change that you think would be really important to get into, feel free to uh, add that in also. Thanks. Is there a timeline for this, or will it depend on what folks want to get into it? We probably we should chat about that. I, I I'm not going to come into timeline now because we haven't really discussed. I, I think um, we all want it to be done as soon as possible, um, since um, we no longer need the experimental flag. But there's there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I, we, I think we just need to split up work, figure out what actually needs to change. Be nice to have it done by end of the year. But yeah, um, yeah, Makes sense. maybe that's a good topic for uh, next week's GA sync. Sounds good. Any additional questions, comments? Okay, thanks, Hayden. All right, anything um, from Git sign? Okay, really says nope. So time stamping, and over to you again, Hayden. Uh, we released a uh, 0.1 release of the timestamp authority. Um, thank you to Meredith, Carlos, and Hector for helping out with this. Um, please give it a try. It's a pretty simple service. Um, we provide a client a server. Uh, you can also use OpenSSL uh, instead of the client that we've written. And the instructions are all in the readme of how to operate it and how to fetch signed timestamps. So give it a try. Um, we'll have a blog post coming out at some point once a little bit more work is done on this um, to talk about how to use the timestamp authority uh, along with um, Recore and some of the additional work that we're starting to work through in the, the timestamping space. Great. Thanks for that. Okay. And to other updates, um, Ezra? Uh, Ezra's not here, I believe, today, but she wanted this discussed. So uh, I can I can wait unless is oh Frederick's here, so you might you might be the right person to to pitch this. Sure, I can go over some details. So 
there is a new repository for capturing uh, protocol buffer specifications for the new bundle format. And the plan is to continue to add in new versions of the API as well here. So we have everything in a single place to have, for instance, reusability being easier to use. And yeah, uh, the first pull request got merged yesterday, which is the new bundle format. And sort of as a consequence of the discussions we had last week on SixerCon, we are starting to mess around right now with um, structures for capturing various details that are going to be used for verification flows. So yeah, feel free to jump in and take a look and see what's happening. So it's not super much there right now, but definitely it will continue to grow as time passes by. Not sure if you would like to add anything more, Zach. You've been pretty involved as well. Yeah, no, the only the only thing I wanna I wanna call out specifically, which is that Ezra mentions that it's very, very interesting to uh implementers of all six door clients. Uh so cosign, yes, but uh, all the language implementations and so on, policy controller, etc. Um so I just dropped a, a link and I pinned this in the um pound cosign uh, Slack channel. Um. Cool. Yeah, nice to see the, the bundle format stuff dropping. Thanks for highlighting that. And Zach, do you want to uh, talk about? Yeah, back, back to me. Um, the the so in the wake of GA, uh, we're going to pick back up uh, an effort that had been underway uh, a little while ago. Um, which is basically uh, writing um, writing down what SigStore is and does and looks like, um, so also known as specifications. Uh, this is, I think, actually really important work, especially as we have more client libraries, um, because while I'm more than happy to like sit down and help out um, a client for a new language reverse engineer, the exact behavior of full CO and, and so on, uh, that's not infinitely scalable. Um, and so and so we really want to write down basically what it takes to be a compliant SIG store client, uh, how to do verification securely, uh, all these things. Um, there's a bunch of other uh, benefits, I think, to having having this stuff written down. Uh, so this is pretty uh, unglamorous, but important work it involves a lot of like writing and not a lot of writing code. Um, I encourage everyone to join the discussion in the architecture docs channel on Slack. Um, and then uh, I have just dropped a link to, yeah, so, so um, or you can contribute. I think there's a pinned link in that architecture docs channel to this landing page. Uh, and then from that landing page, you're going to, you're going to see all the in progress documentation that, that we're working on. So comments, welcome. Uh, if you'd like to help out and write a section, that's welcome as well. Um, and uh, Oh, ultimately, these are going to land in that GitHub repo, but I think while they're you know moving really fast, uh, which they still are, uh, we're we're going to keep them in Google Docs um, for for just a little while longer. So we're going to have a planning meeting. Uh, if if everything works out towards the end of this week, I just dropped a doodle poll in the um, meeting notes for this meeting. Uh, so if you're interested in coming, uh, check that out. Uh, if not, we're probably just going to try to psych ourselves up to do some writing. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if you'd like to participate asynchronously, that's that's fine as well. Just let us know in that channel and we can find something for you to help out with. Great, thanks Zach. And just maybe a quick mention on just seeing the community specification model. I did note there's maybe a webinar coming up this month that Jory Burson is running kind of a, like everything you want to know about next steps on that. So I'll, I'll dig up the details and send it around if anyone's interested. OK. Um, any other updates from SIG store language clients? Anyone have anything to new and noteworthy on Java, Python, Rust, NPM? Okay, doesn't sound like it. Um, okay, so 
on to um, SIGS.GA. Um, I've put a little bit stuff on the PR effort there. Um, but yeah, I think in general, uh, we had the announcement go out at SIGS.CON last Tuesday. As you can see, the blog post there, which um, details kind of the highlights of it. Uh, and then we worked with OpenSSF on the PR, and I've, I've copied in um, some of the, the reporting from that. It was really well received um, by press and media. So you can see um, links to all the articles folks wrote, including um, you may or may not have heard of TechCrunch and a few others. Um, so yeah, really good coverage. Nice to see people excited uh, about security solutions. And then the second section, I won't really go through it, but it's just a a set of the the links to um, like the press releases and the blog posts written by the community, and uh, yeah, no, so thanks to everybody who was involved with that, and also the folks who did interviews and contributed to those articles, and also um, to tie in with GA, uh, there's also I wanted to highlight a new landing page on the OpenSSF um, around Sig Store, so this sort of talks about it at a high level. It links to a playlist, um, highlights some case studies, and just kind of nice CTAs, call to actions in there. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I wanted to mention on the press side. Uh, on the GA side, uh, Bob, was there anything else you wanted to call out? Or maybe anyone else, Hayden or Priya? Um. Great work from everyone. <laughs> Great. And we'll jump into six talk on a little bit more later, but I'm going to stick with the agenda on here. Uh, docs, some notes, some fixes and updates coming up. Um, yeah, that's all. I, I was talking to a few people on Slack and in issues about some um, link issues, and I'm planning on fixing them. Um, but if anybody has any feedback on my proposed solution, let me know. Um, it's in the docs channel in Slack. Yeah, chat. I don't know if Eric Smalling's on the call. I saw he'd been um, looking around and stuff. So yeah, thanks. Appreciate uh, the extra eyes and hands on that. Okay, on to outreach and events. So Hacktoberfest, I guess, is officially over now that we're into November. Um, yeah, I think we this kind of ended up overlapping with a lot of KubeCon and other things. So while we, I think we gave it a bit of a, a stab, I'm not sure how far it went. Did anybody see any significant activity or any PRs come in? I didn't see anything. I think we, yeah, I think with too, there were too many things going on <laughs> this month. It's, but maybe it's like, it's good to know that we didn't get spam at least. Yeah. No spam. And yeah, we just got folks into the process a bit. So, um, but yeah, fair enough with all the GA activity going on. Um, it's good. All right. And six stock on. So, um, yeah, that was last Tuesday. Thanks for everybody who was able to make it, and a big thanks to all the speakers. Um, yeah, I thought there were some really great talks, and I do encourage folks um, to check them out. They are already up on a playlist on YouTube, so really happy um, that even those who couldn't be there can catch the talks. Um, yeah, so super great to meet folks. Um, I was wondering if um, we could do like a quick retro if anybody had feedback. Um, on the event, on stuff that went well, or stuff that we could do better with. Um, yeah, happy to have a discussion or take any feedback. Um, if you want to do it here, that's great. Or yeah, after as well. But anyone with any comments? I'll, I'll take a stab, Tracy. I, I believe it was my first time to be able to meet many of you face to face, and I really enjoyed that. So thank you very much. I think for myself, uh, the retro would be I, I need to show up a little bit earlier so I can introduce myself before going on stage. But uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Autodesk really appreciates it. I really appreciate it. So I'm looking forward to working with you all for the rest of the year and maybe maybe into the next. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jesse. That's great.
Yeah, second with Zach says, great talk, Jesse. I did have a couple of folks coming up to me afterwards, specifically asking about that that talk. So that's good. Anything else? Everybody just exhausted from the intense week it was and all the travel. All right. Um, yeah, feel free to hit me up if there's any other feedback. Um, just a, a couple of follow-ups. We'll be um, just following up with some announcements around the community awards, maybe get a blog post out. And uh, I'll be reaching out to the folks who weren't able to be there to receive the awards just to coordinate um, getting them sent sent to you. But uh, yeah, congratulations to Developer Guy um, and Azra and the Salsa GitHub generators who are kind of our, our three award winners. Okay, Sigstar Landscape. Um, yeah, so one of the things we sort of casually highlighted at SigstarCon, and I, I just wanted to call to people's attention is, uh, we have a little landscape tab, which is as part of the OpenSSF, so OpenSSF has this main landscape, uh, which sort of shows their members, but we have a, a sub tab under that, which um, I don't know if folks remember, I kind of highlighted a sketch for this many, many, many months ago. And the main motivation was really helping people to navigate the ecosystem, especially as it grows. So helping them just get some awareness of the projects, um, as well as the public deployment. So highlighting the public instance, um, as well as we have this link, which links out to the repo Zach highlighted, which eventually should, uh, you know, be an overview of the architecture and and the spec. We also have sections in there for integration, so anything that allows you to sign with cosine or see if things are signed. And if you click on them, you will see there should be a details tab, which takes you to a link to talk about what is the specific integration or yeah, how, how do they fit in together. Uh, the language clients are all featured there as well. So again, links to the repos so folks can see awareness of um, what's existing. And then signed with includes a section where you can see um, which things are signing with Cosign and how you would go about verifying them. So for example, CPython has this how to verify link at the end there, which talks about um, where it's being used and how to verify. And finally, for the case studies we've been doing on the blog, um, we've also put in links there. So um, those link out to the blog post, but again, just a discovery mechanism. So folks um, new to the ecosystem can come in and start to get a quick visual picture. So it is all open source. And I think we'd try to put some guidelines. Um, if anybody wants to help out um, adding features or adding PRs, um, yeah, happy to do that, and uh, yeah, welcome, open to any ideas. Okay, questions, comments? Tracy, how do I add um, someone to that list? We have um, Cilium signing now. Um, so how do I get them yeah. reflected there? So um, if you go ahead and open a pull request, if you click on that, what it is is it's a bunch of XML and an SVG. So um, I'll take maybe an example of the Kaivona one. So you'll be, oops, sorry, I'm not sharing this. Here's an example of Kaivono, so you just add in the right section, the name, URL, Twitter, and a link on how to verify. And maybe the only tricky bit is that you need to have an SVG. Um, but if Cilium is already in the TNCF landscape, we can just like copy, copy that SVG. Sounds great, thanks. Uh, yeah, happy to take a pull request and um, sync with you on that. And congratulations to Cilium and God, the, the signing. That's awesome to hear. Okay. 
moving on um so FOSDEM uh FOSDEM is uh like the big event uh in Europe which will be in February next year I know there's a few folks I've been speaking to who are interested in having a presence there so one option is um that we could have a, a six door booth um we do have to submit something by 15th November um, but the booths are free and they're just set up as tables where we can give away swag and just have conversations um, with all, all the open source folks who go to FOSDEM. Um, but the other thing we're thinking of, like um, some feedback I had from SIGSTOCON is folks would love some space where we could get um, contributors together, get our laptops out and um, just hack on some stuff. Um, so we're thinking maybe we could also do a contributor summit at FOSDEM. Um, it would have to be something we organize as a, ourselves, like just get a room and set up uh, a way for people to register and show up. Um, but I'd be willing to look into something like that if there's uh, enough interest from folks. So yeah, let me know. I might set up a, a document or throw something up in Slack just to kind of test the waters and see see who wants to be involved. Any comments, questions? Okay, moving on. On blog posts, I wanted to highlight uh, case studies. Uh, we've been working with Jesse and Autodesk on an upcoming case study that's now ready uh, for review. So folks can take a look at that. I'm hoping to maybe get that up later this week or early next week and we've got a bunch of folks in progress so there's one on, from verizon and one kubernetes folks and a couple of um things coming out of uh, sigstocon as well just as a reminder if you're interested in doing a case study you can either fill in that form or just message me and uh, i'll talk you can happy to meet and talk through the process Um, that's all for me. Let's go to any other business and over to you, Zach. Yeah, this is an obligatory thing and not actually super important, but the big buzz in a lot of the security world today is around these open SSL vulnerabilities, which they did a tremendous job hyping up as much as possible while still not branding the vulnerability. Um, uh, so I, I had been watching this and, and um, was prepared in case uh, it was going to dramatically affect SIGSTORE. Um, as Hayden points out, uh, it doesn't really. It sort of requires uh, a certificate, uh, which we do create, um, but a certificate with a like maliciously chosen uh, email address in it. Uh, and we don't let people choose their email addresses. We, we sort of um, get those from our OIDC providers. Um, so this, this shouldn't be relevant to any um, SIG store clients. In theory, again, as Hayden points out, if you're doing something private and custom and weird, um, you know, like if you had if you had your own version of this, it could maybe um yeah, yeah, sorry, it's not gonna affect cosine, but oh yeah, so it's not gonna affect cosine. What I worry about it, or what I was worried about for a moment was we issue certificates that are bad for people to verify using open SSL and cause like a buffer overflow and stuff. Um, and it, again, it seems like that's extremely unlikely. It's possible and like a private deployment, but also even if it happened, cosine isn't affected. And, and so we're all in pretty good shape, but just wanted to uh, make, a, make a note of that instead of, um, and it's possibly worth, um, I don't know, filing issues somewhere or, or having a, a document somewhere that's just like, is six or affected? No. Um, just because I know people are going to be thinking about it and asking about it for the next couple of days. There's a there's a good comment on Hacker News that I liked that um, in practice, the way that, you know, this would be most critical would be if you somehow were able to get a CA to issue you a certificate meant for TLS, but also uh, for email um, to trigger this this email name constraint. And that's unlikely, if not improbable. Um, it, you know, I, I think here, given that we do talk about emails, somebody might think about it 
you know, potentially affecting us, but given we, um, yeah, so we can say something, but I mean, I'm, I'm not worried about this. I think this was uh, overhyped by a lot. Cool. So yeah, also, so I come appreciate... with a cool name, right? Like, hard bleed <laughs> was cool. Where's the cool name here? I'm not gonna look at that. That's one of the FAQs, goals. Hayden. If you if you look at the OpenSSL website, one of their FAQs is is this branded? No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I would appreciate if anyone has like a good way. I don't know. Maybe we should tweet about it or something. Like, what's the best way of communicating something that's like lighter weight than doing a full blog post? I guess that would be a tweet. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll make a suggestion in the six store Slack immediately after this meeting saying like, we should just tweet and say, it doesn't affect six or users. Yeah. It seems like a nice lightweight way to do it. And there's a, they, we do have a tweet channel as well, which I used to ping, I think Luke and Dan, who are kind of the, the behind the scenes Twitter folks. Yeah, that's a great idea, Trishank. So yeah, so I'll see you see in Hayden. Hayden and I can draft um, very quickly because we have 200 characters to work with or whatever, but uh, a tweet and then, and then get that out. Great, thanks, Zach. All right, anything else? Otherwise we're moving on to introductions and this is a section where we'd like to welcome anyone new to the community, new to these meetings, or um, someone who would just like to reintroduce themselves or say hi. Um, so yeah, floor is open. Anybody want to say a few words? Okay, doesn't sound like it. I think you've had enough time to fiddle with the mute button, so. Uh, doesn't sound like anyone knew. So yeah, to let you all recover from the travels, those who've been traveling and time zone changes for those in Europe. And we'll see you next week. Next week is um, the office hours. Uh, we have a talk from folks at DB Schenker, uh, who will be talking about their use of Sigstore for, and that's a supply chain company. So supply chain company talking about the supply chain security. So um, that should be pretty fun. Um, and yeah, we do have slots as well. If anybody wants to talk or demo at office hours, uh, let me know or just drop something into the agenda. Otherwise, we'll see you all um, next week or whenever. But thank you all for joining. Bye.